Hello, my name is Hannah and this is my knitting podcast and I haven't done one of these for a while. I don't know why I get stuck in like this headspace of I feel like I have to have a ton of new information to share to be able to post a podcast but then I wait too long like a month and a half and I have like way too much to talk about. There's a few projects that I've been working on that I haven't picked up in a long time. I'm not even gonna worry about talking about those because I've got way too many other things. I really went through a phase of like starting new projects. So I have a lot of new stuff, but we're gonna start with finished objects. I actually have finished four projects in the last like month or so. So that's what I'm gonna start with because that's what's always fun to see. The first one, the first couple actually that I'm gonna get into are some socks. So I had mentioned in my last video, I bought yarn on the vacation that my husband and I went on to make him a pair of socks. And then we went to another store and I got yarn to make him another pair of socks. And I was having a lot of fun. There's just something about like knitting for other people that especially when you know they really want it. Like I've made knit projects for people before, but there's always that thing in the back of my mind that's like, what if they hate this? What if they didn't want this at all? And then I wasted my time and then they feel bad and I feel bad. So I really was excited because I knew that my husband liked the knit pair of socks that I made for him for his birthday in February. So I was really excited to make more because I know he's been wearing them and he said he really likes them. Um, I had talked about these, he is worn and they like might need a wash, <laughs> but, um, these were the first pair that I started on our vacation. These blue and brown, they look like a little stretched out. I have noticed with his, uh, they have they take a lot of wear in the heel. I don't know if you can tell they're like almost a little felty there because he has, I finished these like a month ago. So he's worn these a few times. This was Malabrigo brand yarn, if I remember correctly. I don't know that I have the tag anymore, so. That's just my best guess. But it's 100% superwash merino, it's a DK weight. I started these on vacation and I finished them, like I said, like maybe about three weeks ago. And he really likes them. I've got the other one here as well. Um, it's also fun because I always knit in like really warm tones because that's just what I like. And he picked these out and I was like, this is not something I would ever pick out, so. This is kind of a fun, different thing. I will say I've been following the pattern for, it's just like Patton's classic sock pattern. And the ones that are like a DK weight, I feel like they're too big. And actually, believe it or not, these aren't like supposed to be women's sizes. Uh, the book for whatever reason is only sized in women's socks because only women wear socks, obviously. And so I kind of guessed on like the foot length, but as far as like the leg and heel, this is, um, it's supposed to be just for women. It's not even unisex. So they just, they really have gotten big. So that's like my only complaint with it. I would say if I knit that pattern again, I would probably take like six stitches out, if not more, just cause they stretch out, you know, they, they do how socks do. I got, halfway through the first one of these on vacation and I didn't have my book with me to know how to do the heel shaping so I had to stop and we went to another yarn store and I said hey I could start on another pair since I don't you know just while we're driving I don't have anything else I can do on that one I could start on another pair and these were a first for me because the only socks I had ever made were uh, DK weight and so these are a fingering weight and they're also a self-striping yarn both things that I had never used or done and I love these socks. I actually like while working on it was like I wish I had gotten more of this and I would have made myself a pair because I think they're so cute and my husband picked this yarn out as well. So the first one I finished, I think it was this one. <laughs> no, it was this one. This is the first one I finished. I can't remember if I had it done for the last video, but it is done now. And I just love this self-striping. I think it is so pretty and it looks like perfect. It just, every stripe looks like dyed absolutely perfect. Um, the purple contrast heel was some yarn that I previously had. It was um, a mini skein that I had bought in like a set of mini skeins from 
uh, a dyer on Instagram that I follow called Handful of Yarn. And she always has like little mini skein sets for sale and they're in a two strand. And I really like how they look. So I have a lot of mini skeins from her. Um, but I picked a few out that I thought were complimentary and he picked the purple, which I really like. I think it looks really good and it's really complimentary to the purple in the sock itself. And so yeah, I finished this one and I just got this one done like a week ago, I think. So I was very excited. Now, one thing that I've heard other people talk about, and I don't know if there's like a consensus on this, I wasn't able to start the socks in the same place. Essentially, after I finished the first one, I would not have had enough yarn to get back to this point like in the repeat um, cause it just like ran out too soon. Cause I like, I stopped right before it got to the red in which point I would have had to like had this much extra really to be able to get back to the beginning. And I did not, I like actually barely have anything left of it. I think I have like maybe 10 grams left. Um, so very little. So. I just thought, you know, whatever. I actually kind of like it because if you're wearing like short shoes, you can see all the colors above the heels there. So these are the other pair of socks that I have just finished and I love them. I wish they were my size, but I did tell him the next pair of socks I'm making is gonna be for me because I've made five pairs of socks now. Um, a couple were for Christmas, but the next three were all for him and he said it's my turn. So I am going to be starting one soon. We're going on vacation in a little while here and I thought about actually just like bringing it with me and casting it on in the car because I just feel like that's a good car project because it's just so small, you know, there's not a lot going on with it. So those are the pairs of socks and overall I'm really happy with them. He hasn't worn these a lot so they're not really showing much of any wear. The only thing is I did make a mistake with these and I don't know I can't tell if he's just like too nice to tell me that the fit is like kind of off but I do I can tell because there was a couple times I had him try them on to see like how long I made the toe length because they're only sized for women and he wears like a men's size 12 so it's not going to go off that high. So I had to try keep having it try it on a few times and I realized that I miss misread or misremembered I can't even remember if I look at the instructions for the heel portion this like block here was supposed to be two and a half inches long and I only made it two inches so it is a decent amount shorter than it's supposed to be I haven't blocked them or anything honestly with his last few pairs of socks I've just like he's worn them and then I wash them like their socks and he's not gonna care if they're blocked. So I'm hoping they stretch out a little bit just with that, but that was a mistake that I made and I could tell when I had him try them on that it was just a little wonky kind of in the heel area because it was a little too short. But other than that, I think they turned out really good. So very happy with that. And I still have two more finished projects. So the first one I know I've talked about a few podcasts now. It is a cardigan that I have been working on. It is the Honey Cardigan by Veronica Lindbergh or Kutoba Kika if you watch her on YouTube. It's her Honey Cardigan pattern out of her Knit This book. And if you know me, you know I actually don't follow patterns very often. I did with the socks because like that was that's been a brand new thing for me just very recently here. But when it comes to garments, I very rarely follow patterns. I just I I think I sew enough that that knowledge kind of transfers over to knitting and like understanding what shapes different pieces of knitting garments should be. So I don't typically use a pattern or if I do, I kind of reference it but don't use it like really closely but I had never made a cardigan before and so I thought you know maybe this is a good learning experience I wasn't exactly sure how say the button band for instance should fit and things like that so I thought you know this seems like a good be beginner pattern and something that I might be able to learn something from and I certainly did but I have got to say I don't really like it that much I also have to say I feel like a little bit hypocritical because I know sometimes I watch other people's podcasts and they'll say, you know, I followed this pattern and, you know, I, I finished it and I don't really like it because blah, 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 blah. And I always think, okay, well, you know, if it didn't fit right, you saw it on that person, you saw it fit like this. So like, didn't you think it was also gonna fit like that on you? Like, I've seen people talk about like, oh, this sweater was too oversized, 
but in the picture it looks oversized or just anything like that. I, I just always feel like, you know, there's designers take so many pictures of everything they make. It just feels like a situation where if you really like study the pattern enough, you could probably know whether or not you're going to like it. And I need to eat my words now and uh, eat some humble pie because I found myself in the same situation. Essentially, it is just too bulky for me. And I actually was like kind of shocked by this because I did a swatch and everything. I did what I was supposed to. And kind of where my sizing fit in the pattern was somewhere in between a medium and a large. And I almost went with the large because I do really like an oversized cardigan, but I thought, you know, it's probably gonna relax out a lot. So I went ahead and went with the medium and I still feel like it's way too big. It feels like I made a large. So that's a little disappointing. The biggest thing that I really don't like is just the sleeve length, which this is probably just me not knowing how to follow patterns very well because I don't follow them very frequently, but I did just follow it to a T and I probably should have like went ahead and um, like seamed the body together because this was all panels. I should have probably seamed the body together and seen how much longer I actually should have make it, made it. I would say these sleeves are probably like four inches too long. And I worked on this sweater for so long because it's like this one-sided brioche knit. Um, you know, it just takes so much longer. I just couldn't, I didn't have it in me to take it apart. I did wear it once before it got way too warm to wear a heavy cardigan. Even then though, oh my gosh, the day that I wore it, I was sweating. Uh, I wanted to wear it so bad because I had just got it done like kind of in time for it to still be a little chilly, but oh my goodness, no, it was so hot. So that was a little bit of a bummer and I think also made me dislike it even more because I was just uncomfortable in it. So I may still go back and take some of it apart and shorten the sleeves. I don't know. I also really didn't like the collar of it because it almost didn't have a collar. I don't know how to explain it. It just sits really weird. I think it's probably because I feel like a lot of cardigans don't come to a 90 degree angle. They more like kind of drape off. Um, when I was looking back at the pictures that she had of it, she has it all the way buttoned up, which is really cute, but mine, for whatever reason, did not end up being as fitted as hers was, even though I did the size like slightly smaller than what my measurements were. So I'm not really sure what the situation is. You know, I, I, I used a totally different yarn than what she used. So maybe it's just, you know, the properties of her yarn versus mine. Uh, what I used was Hobie brand tweed. I think it's called Tweed Delight yarn um, in the color Muted Rose, if I remember correctly. And I love the yarn, but I'm thinking maybe that also had something to do with it. Maybe it stretched out more. So in the future, I do feel like there's a good chance that I will go back and alter it to make the sleeve shorter. Because if that was better, I think it would make the whole sweater better. One area where I did modify it, and I don't know <laughs> if this made, made things worse, but the button band. I kind of made my own because I really didn't want to go purchase buttons. So I went digging through my button stash that I already have. And the only ones that I found that I had enough of were these blue ones that I thought were really pretty and did match really nicely. And I like just for the fact that it's like a lot different than what I would normally pick, but they're a lot smaller than the button she recommended. So I went ahead and put uh, six on there. I if I remember correctly, I think the pattern only suggested five, but it had them going all the way up to the very top. I stopped right before the collar section because I just felt like that was weird to put a button on there. And then I also had to modify the button holes then because my buttons are so much smaller. They look okay. I don't think they look great, but for being the first buttonholes I've ever made, they look pretty decent and they actually fit the buttons pretty well. So I was pretty happy with that. Overall, it's not my favorite project I've ever made and it just goes to like justify more to myself that I prefer just drafting my own patterns. I don't know whether or not that's good, you know, because it does kind of limit skills and things that I learn because I'm just going off of what I already know. But it is really frustrating and I'm sure we've all had the experience of making something and spending a lot of time on it and it just doesn't quite work out right. It's just kind of discouraging. So 
you know, I, I'm not going to be wearing it again until probably November, maybe later until it's warm enough to wear this. So maybe by then I will look at it with fresh eyes because I also have that feeling that like sometimes you work on something for so long, you're just like sick of looking at it. So that might also be a little bit of the situation. The last finished object that I have is one that I don't know when the last time is that I've talked about. I know I would have brought it up in like my very first podcast when I kind of introduced all my projects in what was that like October I think but since then I know I had not worked on it until up to like the last month or so because it's a summer knit I started it about a year ago and once summer was over I just like totally lost interest in working on it because I can't wear it it's not summer anymore but it's this little knit cotton tee and I think it turned out perfectly it's exactly the fit that I wanted it to be I used 100% cotton yarn. It's a fingering weight yarn. It's actually a yarn that I don't really know that I've heard people talk about. I really like watching other knitters videos who talk about um, different summer yarns and how much they liked or disliked them. And I didn't hear anybody mention this yarn, but it is the brand k and C. I I believe it's actually a Joanne Fabrics exclusive yarn. It doesn't say if I remember, but that is the only place I looked online. That's the only store that sells it. So I would assume it's a Joann's brand. But last year, and they actually have it this year as well, but I think last year was the first summer that they released it, is a fingering weight, 100% cotton. And this is the second garment that I've finished out of it. And I really like it. It's really lightweight and comfy. Um, I usually do it with like, I know a lot of times fingering weight suggested about like a three millimeter needle. I think I used a four millimeter for this just because I like it to be a little bit breezier and it's still, I would not consider it see-through by any means. Like it's still very opaque and that's just one layer there. I have had a really good experience with this yarn. And so if you live either near Joann's or shop online with them, I would really highly recommend it. It's just really comfy and soft and it's just a nice lightweight material. That's like the biggest, I guess, complaint that I have with other summer or summery type yarns because a lot of the cotton that you find is more of a DK weight and that just automatically is almost too warm. So. This I really like though, I would highly recommend. On that same note, that's a good segue to get into my current projects because I've actually started a third garment out of some more cotton fingering weight yarn from KNC. So this was, I don't know if I would call this an impulsive project. I actually started this project twice and kept taking it apart because I wasn't happy with how it was going. But um, I have this other yarn, it's the same brand, like I just said, but it's a different color. I think it's called like, lemon lime but I bought it last summer I actually looked it up because I was a little worried I'm not gonna have enough and I can't find it anywhere so apparently you can't buy it anymore I guess it was just a, a one season thing but it's the exact same yarn brand everything and I actually have three skeins of this this is the first one you can see I've made quite a dent in but I have two full 100 gram skeins still left so I, I think I'm gonna have enough but I like the shirts that I've made out of that yarn so much, I thought I want to make a dress. So that is what I'm doing right now. Um, it's kind of hard to see because this yarn is really loud, but I wanted to make just sort of like a tank top style on top and really loose fitting, not like boxy necessarily, but kind of flowy summer dress because this yarn has a lot of drapiness and flow to it. And I originally started it from the bottom, if you watch me, you probably know I love bottom up projects. That's mostly what I do. And I just couldn't grasp how I was going to shape it correctly. I knit a dress last summer and I had some issues with like the shaping and where I placed the increases and decreases. And so I thought, you know, what's the best way I can fix that essentially and kind of get around it. So I decided to do top down, which I actually don't think I had ever done before. It was a little bit of like a brain teaser because I'm just coming up with this outside of my own mind. Um, so what I ended up doing was I started, this is the back, I started just right below where I was planning on putting the armpit and knit it up until I got to where I was going to cast off some for the back neck shaping. And then obviously I did knit separately like the straps going across and then in the front just like increased again to make that neckline shaping in the front and then met together and I did 
Another first for me, I did a provisional cast on with like a crochet chain, which I loved. Oh my gosh. In the past, when I've tried to do kind of similar techniques, not necessarily top up, but like more seamless techniques, I've done just like a Kitchener stitch. Ugh, I hate those. So this was amazing. I legitimately cannot find the row. Like it's somewhere in there. There's one row that I picked up. Like I really cannot find a row that the tension is wrong. So it's almost like was shockingly successful to me. Um, but yeah, so I joined back in the round and I'm just knitting down now. You can see I've gotten a little bit of length on it. Um, I usually do not like when colors pool, but I'm kind of interested in what this is doing. You can see it's got it's got some kind of like pooling striping going on. I don't know, I just feel like these really electric tones actually look kind of cool as this like just funky look. And this dress is something I'll wear really by itself. So I'm not really worried about needing to match it to stuff and it can't be too loud. Like it's kind of a standalone piece. So I'm really excited. I've got, I haven't weighed this, 35 grams. That's a rough estimate left of this. And I have 200 more grams. So I really think it's gonna be like a decent sized dress and I'm probably just gonna use just about everything I have and use up about three skeins of yarn. So we'll see when I'll get this done. I'm gonna try and actually have this done for this summer. It's really been so fun to knit on because I have no discomfort knitting with this cotton. I don't know if it's mercerized, actually. It doesn't say on the label, I did look. It does have a small level of shine to it though, which I know it can sometimes be like a calling card of mercerized cotton. I don't know if you can even tell. It's just got like a tiny bit of shine, but either way, I really like it and it's really comfy and just cooling. So I'm very excited about this. The next one that I want to talk about will be familiar if you've watched my previous podcast. I have been calling this one the mermaid sweater because of the color tones in it. And I've gotten a lot done on this one, I'm going to be honest. So this one I am doing from the bottom up and I'm going to try and it's just like so awkward to show work in progress because they're all over the place. So this is almost all that I've gotten done. Um, gosh, it's just like so weird because it's not blocked or anything. Just know that it's going to look better. But I just cannot get over how many pretty colors are in this. This is yarn from Ruby and Roses. Again, a dyer that I follow off Instagram. If you don't know who she is, if you don't follow her, I would highly recommend going and following her because she just makes such pretty yarn. She has great ideas when it comes to color. But this is... Uh, actually, another discontinued one I got on sale on her website a couple years ago, actually, because it was a discontinued yarn and it's officially gone. Like, there's no more of it left. And I believe it's called a princess tail, but it just reminded me so significantly of, like, a mermaid swimming through water because of the pink and the green and, like, the overwhelming amount of blue. So this, I have actually gotten to, like, splitting for sleeves right there and I'm going up. I like to go up the back first or what I consider the back just because I feel like, you know, the back's going to be more than the front because your neckline sits mostly in the front. So it feels like once you have that done, it's, like, easier to do the front. I don't know. It's not that much different, really. But I have gotten that far up the back, so that's pretty exciting. And it just... It just feels so nice. I will never get over like just like the squish of the wool. I don't know. It's just so nice. So I'm incredibly excited about this. I'm hoping, you know, maybe I can have it done for fall because I think this would be a great transition piece because it's in fingering weight. So it will just be a nice kind of cool, sort of cool sweater but I just love it. I think it's so, so, so pretty. So that's it for projects that I think I've talked about already. I have cast on a number of new ones just because I've been feeling like a little impulsive and I feel like that big change in season from winter to summer always makes me like have a million ideas because like styles are changing and colors are changing and also some of the yarn that I ordered months ago is finally in. So all of those combined kind of brought me to like cast on a lot of new projects. I have kind of talked about this first one, but I had only been swatching up to this point. So it is my sweater made with like alpaca and surrey and cashmere yarn. 
Um, I think I've talked about these before, but this is my 100% alpaca that I got at the Wool Festival last fall. And then this is a sweater I took apart. And then this is some Surrey alpaca. So definitely like really cozy, fuzzy sweater. And I talked about a swatch that I made for it a month ago, probably. So it has been a while. I actually didn't start on this until just a couple weeks ago. I just got the urge to start a new project. And I thought, I already know what I'm doing for this one. And it's definitely been a big endeavor. This is the first cable knit sweater I'm ever trying. And I came up with my own designs to put on it. So I am definitely going outside my comfort zone, but I'm really loving it. I think it's definitely paying off. So I will show you what I have so far. It's not amazing, like lengthwise, but I love it. So you're probably not gonna be able to see like all the detail because it's such like a uh, fine colored sweater but in the center I've got this kind of like very large cable column this is like halfway through the repeat so it does this like all over again so I haven't even done like one repeat of this and then I've got some like twisted stitch um kind of barriers almost and then on each side it's like a mirror um and I've got this one and then another little barrier this one's actually out of a different book um, I had been using the Japanese knitting stitch Bible for like these two. And then this is actually out of just like my regular, it's called like the knit stitch dictionary, I think. Um, but this is out of there. This is actually the first bobbles I've ever knit. It's one of those things where I, I thought it like was way harder than it actually was. I had never knit bobbles before. So that's exciting. And then I've just got a small, like a really small cable here on the very edge. And then kind of where the underarm will be, I'm doing, it's not really like a seed stitch. I don't know how to explain it. So I do on the right side, knit one, purl one. On the wrong side, I purl. And on the right side, I do purl one, knit one. So it's like a seed stitch with a row of stockinette in between just to kind of break it up a little bit more. But that is the design I came up with. And I love it. Actually, I'm so happy with it and it feels amazing i love it it's just oh, i wish i could put it on right now actually but the plan is to make it like a really oversized sweater and then i'm going to leave this ribbed portion a split hem so i just i'm so excited about it i also don't know what to call this one so if you have any ideas it has definitely been like a labor of love though it's taking a lot of mental power to keep track of all these because they all have different repeats, which I think is run of the mill for when you, whenever you make a cabled sweater, but it's like, this is a four, or four row repeat. This one's 14 row repeat. This one's 16. And then this one's, I think like 36 or 32 row repeat. So I have two different books open and I've got sticky notes on all the pages to like move every time I do a row so that I keep track of where I'm at with all of them. Thus far, it's been very successful. So I think I'm just going to keep doing that. It's pretty slow progress, but it's also kind of fun for whenever I just want to sit down and like focus on knitting because it's certainly not a mindless knit. The next current project I'm going to talk about is brand new. I've never seen before. This is a yarn I've actually had like two or three years, probably at least. It is a Lion brand yarn. It is, I think, a yarn they still sell. I actually don't know. Um, I got it at Joanne Fabrics a few years ago, but it is from their Comfy Cotton collection. And it is like 60% cotton and I think 40% acrylic or polyester, some sort of synthetic. And this is in the colorway Garden Party. And I just, I love those colors. And because it's a cotton, that really got me interested in knitting it for summertime. So I started a sweater in it and it's kind of a DK, maybe even a little bulkier than a DK. So it was going really fast. I knit a lot of fingering weight, if you couldn't tell. So uh, anything larger than that, I like kind of move through really fast. So I've already got the back panel done on it, which it looks tiny. It's just really rolled up. It went really, really fast. And I've started the front panel. I didn't grab it, but I'm not very far into it. I'm like two inches into the ribbing. So it's like not much to look at, but I really like it. It just has a lovely variegation and there's no color pooling. 
which I really like. I think it gives it a really nice kind of cohesive look. So I'm going pretty far on this one. I'm going to be honest and say I haven't worked on it in a couple weeks, so I'll pick it up at some point. I am planning on taking this one on vacation with me, though, because I think it's a really good car knit because I don't have to alternate skeins and it's pretty fast and it's really mindless. So I might get a lot more done on it. We'll see. And then I've got a couple more projects, but these are specific to some acquisitions. So I'm going to kind of combine those portions of my video here. So if you've heard me talk about yarn acquisitions before, I really haven't been buying yarn just because I have a lot in my stash and I need to use it. So I haven't purchased a lot of yarn in the last six to eight months, whatever it may be. But in October of last year, I did purchase from the Dyer Woolen Works run by Chloe. She had a Barbie collection, which if you can't tell from the Barbies I like have out currently, and also I've talked about Barbies before because I do love them, um, but hers is based on like the Barbie movie and she had just some absolutely fabulous colorways. So I had to, I did. I purchased some yarn and it just came in a few weeks ago and I am incredibly excited to share because it is lovely. So probably the one that I was most excited for and I actually ended up doing two orders because I just bought this right off the bat because I just immediately was like, I have to have this, but I don't need any more. And then I bought more, but it is this just gorgeous Surrey alpaca. It is a sock weight Surrey. So it is like just a little puffier and beefier than like the normal kind of lace weight surrey but it is in i just think like the barbie pink color and i was absolutely smitten you cannot show me a fluorescent pink and have me not be excited that's not gonna happen and i got a sweaters quantity i have a fourth squint Squain. I have a fourth skein of this that I had plans for. That's part of why I didn't really feel bad buying it because my plan is to pair it with a different pink yarn. This is from Ruby and Roses. Again, this was her collection last summer. This is called Material Girl and I think she actually still has it in her online shop. So if you're interested in this gorgeous other shade of fluorescent pink, it's still out there. But I bought this in a fingering weight and I thought, you know, I don't, I don't know if I wanted it in a fingering sweater, fingering weight sweater. Like it's just such a beautiful, vibrant color. I felt like it needed a little bit more body to it. And I had thought for a while that I would be interested in getting like the same color in some Surrey from Ruby and Roses. But all that's on the website online is just what's like currently in stock. It's not pre-orders obviously like they can't be constantly open to pre-orders and they only had two skeins of the surrey it's just not enough for a sweater so i was like you know it's fine like I'll, I'll i'll figure out a sweater that i'm like inspired to make out of it well then woolen works drops her barbie line i said this is perfect so i got this to pair with this they are slightly different shades i feel like it's coming off as really dramatic it's not that different um but I actually kind of really like it. So this is caked up because I did a swatch. And I also want to say that this Surrey alpaca is so puffy and amazing that it was like too much for my yarn winder. That's why it's like in this ugly ball because it just got too puffy for it. I didn't even have space for it on there. So it's amazing. Oh my gosh, it just feels so nice. But I did a small swatch. I haven't started a sweater with this, but I was just too excited to not talk about this swatch because... I just love how it looks so much. Here she is. I was a little worried about the two different shades of pink, but I actually think they look so good together. I think that small amount of variegation just really pops. And I actually would like to also do a cable knit sweater in this, but I'm thinking of like, it'll probably just be like an all over cable stitch, probably like a very small, like maybe five or six stitch wide cable that it is the entire sweater is covered in the same cable just because I think that that would be a simple enough of a texture that the color could really shine but it pops enough that that Surrey alpaca is not going to eat it but I am just so absolutely gobsmacked with this color like oh 
how can you not be? I know this is such a small swatch to look at, but I love it so much. And then, like I said, that was my first order from Woolen Works. She had the collection open for, I think, two weeks. And on the last day, I was like, you know what? I want more. <laughs> so I got some more. <laughs> the other shade that I was really smitten with was the shade called Real World, which was based on basically like this kind of swimsuit roller skate outfits that Barbie and Ken were wearing when they go to the real world for the first time. And I'll show you, this is the picture she put on her Instagram of these and I just was absolutely in love. It's just so many pretty, beautiful, bright colors together. So I thought I really, really want that. And if I'm gonna get real world, I want that like electric greeny yellow color to go with it because it just looks so good together. So I got two skeins of the real world and I got these in a sport weight and these are them and they're so pretty. I love all these colors together. I just think they blend beautifully and they just look so good. Now, I want to say I love these. Absolutely. But they are not as bright as they look in the picture. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Not only because I love my bright colors. And don't get me wrong, these are gorgeous. I would have loved these by themselves anyways. But I got the electric, you know, like lime. It's not called lime. It's called roller blades to go with it. But it is just like way too bright. It does not, I don't think, look good together. So that kind of bummed me out. I don't know. I could see how these could vibe. But I just am not really into it if I'm being honest I just I don't think they look as good together as I wanted them to so I still love both the colors but I don't think that I will use them together I had a grand plan here that I would get enough to make a sweater and I got these five all in a sport weight to put together in a sweater well these two are super vibrant and neon and I love them and I got you know obviously I'm to go with this and I think that they are just so vibrant that they make these look like unimportant almost. Whereas like these are kind of supposed to be like the star of the show. So I think that I'll probably try to figure out a project to put these two together. Like I said though, they're sport weight and most of the yarn that I have is fingering. So I'll probably put it on the back burner for a little bit because I'm not really sure what I'll do with this. I did also get though this color Beach Off to go with these. And I think it looks really good. It vibes really nicely. So I would say these three together would look really nice, but three is not really enough to make a sweater for me. Four is like a really safe place to be. I'm not saying I couldn't do it in three, but I usually need a little bit more. So that's maybe like TBD. And I have like a lot of minis and things that could probably pair with it nicely. I just haven't sat down and thought about it because I have a lot of projects already going currently. So didn't pan out exactly how I wanted to, but I still love all the yarn. And I really love how fluorescent these are. They just look so good. And then the last skein of yarn that I got from Woolen Works was a total one-off by itself. This is the color Greta. And it's this beautiful little peachy pink color. And this is her boucle base because, and I think I've talked about this before, I have had some boucle yarn, actually, it was a single skein that I got from another dyer that I really like on Instagram named Super Glow Fibers. And I have skeined this up, so it's like maybe a little bit harder to see, or I've caked it up. But it's this beautiful variated um, colorway. I really, really liked it. I didn't really have anything to match it, though. So I made a point last fall to find some at the Wool Festival that I thought looked really good with it. And then I only had three skeins, though, and that like three skeins made me kind of nervous. So I got Greta to go with it because I think those are lovely together. And it made me want to start a new sweater when I got Greta because I've been staring at this yarn forever. So I started a boucle sweater and I also was able to use up some of my like kind of one-offs that I have also from the Wool Festival last fall. I got this beautiful pink, it's 100% alpaca. Now this isn't 100% alpaca. If you can kind of see, probably just barely, I mixed it with one strand of fingering because it was just a little bit too light of a yarn. Like this is 
probably closer to like a DK, whereas I think this boucle kind of comes off as more of like, it's not a bulky by any means, but it's just the texture adds a lot of body to it. So I did hold it with a fingering. Oh, here, I can show you the end here. So that's the alpaca, the really nice and fuzzy one. And then I put a strand of fingering with it, but fortunately they're really close shades. So I feel like they blend really nicely. Um, but this is like the front bottom. And then because I've just got kind of like random amounts of everything, I thought, what if I just do like a random stripey motif? So I'm going up, or sorry, this is the back actually, because I've already went up too tall for the front, but I'm going up the back, um, just alternating striping colors. I do have two skeins of the yellow and only one of everything else. So I'm trying to go kind of yellow heavy. I don't know if I like this yet, <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm not sure if I love my variegated as much as I thought I did. I don't know, sometimes I feel like you knit up a variegated skein and it's just like, I don't know if I like this very much anymore. So I'm still deciding if I like it. A couple things that I think are gonna help a lot. So I'm going to, my plan is to make it sort of like a collared sweater. So I'll have like a V-neck and then a little collar that comes off of it, which I really like, sort of like a, a polo style color to it which I think kind of elevates any sweater I love that look and I'm going to make the collar out of this pink because I have a ton of it left still it was like a I think an 80 gram skein so there's a lot there and then the cuffs on the sleeves I have this same yarn but in kind of a teal shade and I'm thinking all those together might kind of pull it together a little bit more I haven't worked on this in a little bit just because I felt a little like hmm, do I like this as much as I did? But I am going to try and persevere because I think it is just such pretty and such like fuzzy, fluffy yarn that it's got some, it has potential. I just maybe need to stare at it a little bit longer. I'm not sure. But that's where I've gotten on that. So this is, this is the only portion I've gotten done. But like the other one I was working on, it feels like it's going so fast because I think I'm using like a size eight needle. Like, what's that? That's so much larger than what I usually use. So that is the boucle sweater I've been working on. And it might, I might not work on it for a while. We'll see. So while I do have some other like current work in progress, I haven't touched anything else. So those are the ones that I've been working on. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is some more acquisitions that I had. So another pre-order that I had participated in, I guess, was back in February with Ruby and Roses. If you can't tell, I have a few dyers that I just love. She did a an entire collection themed after Taylor Swift albums, which I thought was really interesting. And she did an amazing job about putting color schemes together. And there was a couple that I just like couldn't stop thinking about. Like they were so good. And she released this collection. She usually does like one colorway a day up till when the collection drops, which is so smart because you have that whole time to just think about how much you like them, which is also super dangerous. It's really smart on her end. I don't disparage that at all. I love the, uh, the business practice, but it is like dangerous because you see this colorway and you just think about it like all day because it was so pretty. So I did order some from that, which I mentioned in my last podcast, so this isn't new, but I picked two different colors that I really, really liked. And this first one is called, called Blue Meets Red. And I just thought this was the perfect, like moody toned yarn. And actually people had asked her like, you know, what was the best selling and worst selling yarns? And she said, this was one of the worst selling, which <laughs> I was like, do I have bad taste? Like, why did people not like this? Cause I just think it's so pretty. But I got it in a Surrey alpaca. If you can't tell, I love Surrey. Yeah, so here she is. Are these not gorgeous? I just, I like cannot get over how pretty they are. They just have so many beautiful shades in them. And I mean, obviously, you know, I love pink and reds and purples. Those are all like the warm tones playing together. It's gorgeous. I love it. And I thought, you know, I could pair this with, I actually have another fingering weight from Ruby and Roses that is this really gorgeous, like purpley tone, but I kind of think it's too bright for this. I'm not totally sure what I'm going to be doing with these right now, but I love them. It kind of bums me out that this was like 
one of her lowest selling ones. I just, I think it's so pretty and it's so soft. Like, I just love Surrey so much. It just feels so nice. I feel bad when people say they have like a sensitivity to it because I just can't get enough of it. Like if I could make everything I own be in Surrey, yes, please. That is not all the yarn that I bought in the Taylor Swift collection. I also got this other color. I do not wear this color very much, honestly. I, like I just said, I'm a red, purple, mostly pink tones. I love, but I have been trying to lean into different colors because it can be hard when you own like 20 pink shirts and then like you're trying to wear a pink skirt. What do you put with that? So it's nice to have some variation just for mixing and matching the wardrobe a little bit. I just got this blue shirt at a garage sale a few days ago. So I'm trying to mix it up a little bit more. But another color that I never wear is yellow. And I saw this one and I just could not get over how pretty and sunny and bright it was. It just drew me in immediately. It is called Love Story and it is this gorgeous yellow yarn. It has so many speckles in it and you know I had to get a sweater's quantity because like it's just too beautiful. Like I first of all I loved it and I also thought you know I don't want to pair it with other stuff and have you know, other shades of yarn taking away from it. And so I just felt like a sweater's quantity is what I want to do. And this was some spending money I had been saving up. This is it. This is all of it. This is some spending money I'd been saving up. And this is what I want to spend my money on. It's just yarn. That's all I'm ever interested in. So here she is, beautiful in her glory. I love it. I love it. There's just so many colors. I can't get over that. That's like one of my favorite things with Ruby and Roses is I feel like the longer you stare at the skein of yarn, the more colors that pop. So that was my Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift collection haul. I'm really excited about it. I haven't touched any of it just because I got it not very long ago. So it's been just in the stash, but I've been really excited about it. And I don't know if anybody else does this, but always when I get new yarn, I like to like leave it out somewhere that I walk past it a lot. I usually leave it on like my desk over here or like my desk chair. And every time I walk by, I just like pick it up and look at it. Cause it's like seeing it new for the first time again, that you're just like, oh, it's so pretty. So it's like, you get to just experience it a few times after you get it. It's not just like a one and done serotonin rush. You get to keep having that happen. So I do have, a couple more acquisitions, but these are not a big deal. I feel actually, actually pretty good about these. So I mentioned already that I went to a garage sale this weekend. I've actually went to garage sales the last couple weekends because I love garage sales. And I found some yarn, which usually I feel like all I ever find at garage sales is really crispy feeling acrylic from like the 80s. That's almost it. And I found a lot of garage sales that had that. It just is obviously something people kind of want to get rid of. But I did go to a couple, you know, I always have an eye out for those natural fibers because wool, it's expensive. We know it is. And so if I can find it like at a discount at someone's secondhand sale, absolutely, I will buy it. And I went to one sale. It was a really nice garage sale. Let me first of all say, it was like this really sweet little lady. She had the most beautiful collection of glassware and um, she had, I think like five quilt tops for sale and they were so pretty, but I just am not that into quilting and I don't have like a machine to make it into an actual quilt and it just, I don't want to get into hand sewing. So I was like, Ugh. I told her they were beautiful, but I did not get any of them. But she had a whole box of yarn that I went through and she had a couple skeins that drew my eye. The first one, this is a brand I've never heard of before. Sugar, Sugar Bush, Sugar Bush Motley, but it is 60% alpaca and 40% merino wool. And I just thought it was so gorgeous. Here's the label. I've never heard of this before, but I found it at a garage sale, but it just, it almost looks like hand spun because of the variation in it. And 
it just seems so unique and pretty and I have lots of browns that I think would go really nicely with it so I could not resist and it didn't have a price on it and I said you know how much is the yarn and she said a dollar a skein what like this has a label and it says fourteen dollars that's such a good deal I even was like are you sure like this is obviously as good as new like I I know it costs more than a dollar and she was like yeah I'm not gonna use it so all right and then I found a second one there this is Iroko no uh Cloudborn fibers sorry it's got a label that looks a lot like Iroko but it is not apparently but it is in the color blueberry brickle and it is 100 percent superwash question mark yeah superwash merino and it's just such like a blank slate yarn i think i could think of like five yarns right now that would go with it immediately because it's pretty in a classic dk weight yarn this would go with a ton of stuff also a dollar so that was really exciting i love a good deal and then i actually went to a garage sale this past weekend with my mom and there was another bin it was full of a lot of like I don't even know how to explain it like they're just incredibly hairy or like the ribbon yarns things like that there was a ton of those I just don't know what I would ever do with those so I did not get those but they did have two yarns that I was interested in the first one is this paint box yarn it is 100% wool and they had two 50 gram skeins of it and it's a really nice classic kind of earthy shades and then I think it's like kind of color changing just based on like how it looks like it changes from green to like sort of this brownish so I thought that could be kind of interesting maybe for like a, a scarf or a cowl probably a cowl there's only 100 grams here but I'm sure I have something I could pair it with also so not a concern but I got those as well as some classic I believe this is um, it's either uh that sugar and cream from Walmart, and that's kind of what I'm thinking it is, just based off the color tones. I don't know. It's definitely 100% cotton, and I use this yarn all the time to make little washcloths for like dishes and things because it's 100% cotton and it holds up really nicely. And I give them for gifts all the time, and people say they like them. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say people really like them because they they say they like them, but I have just always felt like it's a really useful gift and. They charge me 50 cents a skein, so $1.50. I'll take that. And that is everything I have to share. Ugh, I know this is a long video. I always have a goal in mind of like, I'm going to do this more often. So <laughs> we'll see if I actually do. I don't know. Maybe I need to put it on my calendar or something. But see, then it's like an actual deadline where I'm like, I have to knit a lot by this point. And... Then it stresses me out and I don't do anything and then I have to get rid of the deadline. So I'm just a mess and I'm sorry that I'm really sporadic at posting. So if you're still here and you enjoyed seeing all my projects, thanks for being here and thanks for dealing with me just being disorganized generally. So hopefully you uh, kind of enjoyed. I have a huge array of projects, so I feel like there had to be something that you liked watching maybe but thanks so much for being here and for staying with me the whole time and i hope you come back for the next one whenever it may be